Josh Rundberg, good to have you here. Nice to be with you, Emma. Now, AGL boss Andy VC says he intends to replace the uh, power generation loss from the closure of the Liddell coal-fired power station with a combination of wind and solar projects, new gas peaking plants and an upgrade to AGL's Bayswater uh, coal plant. Is the government happy with that arrangement? Well, AGL have committed to ensure that there are no uh, consequences for the affordability and the reliability of the electricity system from the scheduled closure of Liddell in 2022. Uh, we intend to hold them to that. At the same time, Andy Vesey has agreed to take to his board a proposal to keep Liddell open for a few more years or alternatively to sell to another party. Now, obviously, this is an alternative plan as well, which the board is considering. So when the board is ready, when Andy is ready, then the government will obviously look at their plan. Now, clearly, this is the chief executive's uh, you know, preference. Mm. So you suspect that the board will look quite favourably on their chief executive, given he is the steward of their <laughs> company. Does this take the pressure off, do you think, to keep Liddell open or sell it? Well, look, our focus is on outcomes here, and that is ensuring that there is not a shortfall of 1,000 megawatts of dispatchable power. That is what AEMO advised the government would occur if Liddell would close on, at 2022 without necessary alternative uh, procedures, processes and projects But if there is place. an alternative that isn't keeping well, it the plant to, open it would, or selling it, would have it to be you'll be happy with that? It would have to be considered on its merits, but what we are focused on is ensuring there's no shortfall in the domestic market. When will the government honour its commitment to a clean energy target? Well, the government has received the Finkel report with 50 recommendations in quick time. Yes, we've, we've talked about this before. No, You've taken up 49 well, of them. Number 50 is the well, clean energy target. Well, You've said it was going to be delivered before the end of the year. Is that still well, the plan? Emma, you're verbling uh, me and everyone else in the government. What we have said is that we'll respond to this 50th recommendation of a clean energy target. Don't dismiss out of hand the other 49 no, recommendations we, no, because they're critical. Because you've taken them up. No, and, and that is a good thing and, and the states have followed suit. With regards to the clean energy target, we have said we'll respond before the end of the year. But will there be a firm climate change policy commitment before the end of the year or just further discussion? Well, if you're talking about reducing emissions, we're absolutely uh, committed to doing that. We no, said, but with a policy. Yes, with a policy. Well, we've got plenty of policies that are doing that already. If you're talking about integrating climate and energy policy, obviously that's a focus for the government too. But there are a number of mechanisms that are in place that have ensured we've met our previous Kyoto target and we're on track to meet our 2020 target. The chief scientist and our says we need a target. clean energy target. Well, the chief scientist, after an extensive report, a good report, an important report, and from his expert panel put 50 recommendations. This was one of them. Like I said, we accept the 49 and we'll consider the 50th. Are you confident that gambling close to a billion dollars on the Adani coal mine in Queensland is a sensible use of Australian taxpayers' money? Well, again, uh, you're jumping the gun there. The Northern Australia Infrastructure Facility uh, and that process and that board is independently assessing that request. Have you done enough as a government, do you think, to satisfy yourself in the due diligence sense that that Adani is a company that can be trusted to pay their fair share of taxes in this country, not get involved in the type of corrupt activity it's been found guilty of in India and not pollute the groundwater and cause damage to the Great Barrier Reef? I have great confidence in the good offices of the Department of Environment when it comes to compliance indeed of the State Departments of Environment when it comes to compliance, bearing in mind that this has received approval at the state level from a Queensland Labor government. And I also have great confidence in the ATO to ensure that those tax matters you referred to uh, ensure that everyone pays their fair share of tax. Were you troubled by anything you saw on the Four Corners program last week? Look, obviously we've seen those reports about Adani, but the point that I make is that there were very rigorous assessment processes to that project. The Commonwealth put in place a number of environmental uh, restrictions and protections, the state level as well. This has been tested through the courts, Emma, and now we're at the point where the, the company is proceeding and obviously that will create thousands of jobs and it's not irrelevant to point out that the locals in those relevant areas, whether it's in Townsville, Mackay, 
Rockhampton, Hewenden, other towns within that vicinity of northern Queensland are very pleased that there'll be thousands of jobs coming from a major resources project. So that Northern Australia financing facility, uh, that's a government facility? It's $5 billion put aside for development in Australia's north. It uh, was put in place following the passage of legislation which received the Parliament's support. And so that $900 million, close to a billion dollars for Adani, that hasn't necessarily been approved yet? Well, it's not my portfolio because I'm not the, no longer the Minister for Northern Australia, but obviously that is a decision for the independent board. But that's critical to whether this coal mine goes ahead or not, isn't it? Well, that relates to infrastructure. Obviously, the company is meeting the costs of the other parts of the project. And I have to point out they've already invested significantly in this project and in northern Queensland. Are you sure coal is a good investment when China, the biggest polluter in the world now, has announced an emissions trading scheme to reduce its carbon emissions before the end of the year? South Korea already has an emissions trading scheme. India's put a price on carbon. Well, coal, in terms of its use, is actually going up, even in a country like China, in the years ahead. Uh, and in fact they're building these high efficiency, low emission coal-fired power plants in India, lower in China, emissions. with lower emissions, that's right, about 40% reduction from Healy plants. My view about coal and gas and renewables is that you need to have an all of the above strategy. Not all electrons are created equal. Intermittent sources of power, wind and solar, don't have that level of dispatchability um, that you do get from thermal generation, from synchronous generation. At the same time, coal and gas uh, have CO2 emissions and that is an externality that needs to be dealt with. So both forms of generation, thermal and renewable, have their positives and their negatives and you need a system that can actually account for both. Now, you mentioned in your speech today that 10 coal-fired power stations mm -hmm. have closed over the last 10 years. That takes us back to 2007 um, when John Howard was... Uh, well, he lost government in 2007. Mm. You would have had some warnings. Well, you weren't in government, but the, the, the coalition would have had some warnings back then that some of these were closing. Who do we blame now for not having replaced this sufficiently? It's a very good question because... Well, Far from assigning blame, the key point here is that there was no requirements in the system to provide notice of closure. Dr Finkel in his report has made it very clear that from now on, large thermal generators or large renewable generators that are going to close need to provide a minimum of three years notice. This will Liddell have... provided, sorry for the interruption, Liddell provided seven years well, notice before and, Alan Finkel and, put and, this as a recommendation. And, and, and that is a good point. What AGL have done with Liddell is different to what Anji and Mitsui did in relation to their plant uh, in Victoria, Hazelwood, and is different to what happened with the Northern Power Station. We've had an average of five to six months notice for the last few power stations that have closed. And you can't actually plan and prepare for a system when you take out that amount of synchronous base load generation and replace it with insufficient amounts of intermittent sources of generation or insufficient amounts of storage. So that is a point that Finkel has picked up and that is why he's taken this recommendation, which we accepted and the other states and territories have as well. And just finally, Daniel Andrews on the weekend says Australians are fair to ask why Australian gas is so much cheaper to buy in Tokyo than it is here. Well, the answer is it's not, and the head of Shell has made that very clear at the conference today. But Daniel Andrews himself has to come clean with the people of Victoria about why he is refusing to develop 40 years' worth of gas resources. You see, in Victoria, according to the Australian energy market operator, the amount of gas being produced will fall by nearly 50% between now and 2021. Victoria has the most numbers of manufacturers in the country and the most number of households that are dependent on gas. Victoria is looking to import gas with an import terminal from the Middle East or elsewhere, the consequence of which is much higher gas for people in Victoria. The gas is sitting there. And I say to Daniel Andrews, follow the recommendation of Australia's chief scientist, 
follow the findings of Geoscience Australia where they've found that there's gas in the ground there, develop it on a case-by-case -case basis. It can be environmentally sustainable and it will certainly be good for jobs, investment and growth in your state. Josh Rodenberg, thank you very much for coming in. Good to